Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about Tropical Storm Elsa rapidly forming into our first hurricane of the season with Jamaica on high alert as a U.S. threat into early next week. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Friday, July the 2nd, and the National Hurricane Center had to put out a special advisory because uh, Elsa has rapidly informed into our first hurricane of the season. It's down to a 995 millibar. It's moving west northwestward at 28 miles an hour with official sustained winds of now 75 miles an hour so as we take a look at the latest barbados actually picked up an 86 mile per hour wind gust this morning as uh, elsa is rapidly intensifying so it'll continue uh elsa will pass near in in and over portions of the windward islands or the southern leeward islands this morning and move across into eastern the caribbean sea later on today into tonight and then move into the near southern coast of hispaniola on saturday so by then sunday uh elsa is forecast to become near jamaica and portions of eastern cuba so that's why they've got hurricane warnings currently right now in barbados and the saint lucia as well as saint vincent in the grenadines but they also have tropical storm force uh warnings into martinique but then watches down the line into grenada uh, J jamaica as well as uh, dominica with these with this system coming through so if we take a look at the overall satellite picture, what's really happening, here's our cold front with some very heavy rain. That's pushing out of Oklahoma into Texas. That's crossing into portions of the southeast with some heavier rains along the east coast into the uh, New England states. We also have uh, what was 95L actually bringing some rain showers this morning uh, into Jamaica. But then here's our major player down here by the Leeward Islands. That is Elsa with a, now a hurricane. We've got a pretty good tropical wave as well coming off uh, the African coast. But if we zoom in to uh, Elsa, man, you can see why this is now a hurricane. It's got pretty good circumference with it. It's actually got that bus all look to the north. So that's pretty good, like I said, circumference. Got uh, really cold cloud tops. This is Barbados, and that's why they picked up that 86 mile per hour wind gust. And you can almost actually see an eye that's trying to form uh, with this system. If you take a look at the latest water vapor imagery, this is what's really happening. There was what was 95L. There's some drier air in the yellow down to the south. It's actually eating away that drier air opening the door for Elsa for to rapidly intensify and man look at this this looks pretty pretty ominous on the water vapor imagery as this not even this little dry air out ahead of it's not even phasing this one bit and it's got a lot of open water to work with over the next 48 hours as it continues moving across and that'll put Jamaica in the crosshairs by Sunday but if we take a look at the latest radar of in Barbados this morning, here is Barbados. You can, you can actually see what looks to be possibly an eye that's already trying to form. And that's where they picked up that 86 mile power wind gust as the rain bands are wrapping, wrapping around. This will continue moving across, impacting uh, the Leeward Islands. Uh, this morning. So if we take a look at the latest uh, guidance and all the models, a lot of them have taken that westward uh, track, pretty much put it continuing moving into the Gulf of Mexico. It's pretty prominent what's going to happen over the next 48 hours. That's why it puts it in and around the near the island of Jamaica by Sunday. The spread, it starts to really kind of spread out as we go get past the 72-hour window because there's a lot of depiction of what could happen after it hits Cuba and to the, you know, the mountain regions. It's got this high pressure that's going to be influencing, and but it's also got a cold front that's also going to be kind of a steering mechanism and maybe cause it to slow down once it gets past uh, Cuba as it goes into potentially the Gulf of Mexico. But here's the latest intensity models. Yeah, pretty much all of them put it as a Cat 1. Now it's officially a Cat 1 hurricane. Some of them put it as a Cat 2. 
but then even the most bullish model has actually pushed it up to a major hurricane potentially could be on the table that's just in the next two and a half days so that's what we have to look uh, possibly to look forward to with this system now i've been kind of talking about the hwrf model this is has been the most bullish case but it's actually proven itself already as it has the last several years it was actually calling for a hurricane in the leeward islands just yesterday and it did come to fruition so what's going to happen going forward this is the latest update from the hwrf by tomorrow morning this would be you know more or less uh, noon time on saturday the third this would equate it to an 80 knot which would be 92 mile per hour hurricane so that would only be about 17 more more miles an hour than what it is currently right now this would continue lifting off into the west northwest and then still intensifying possibly into almost a major hurricane by then getting in and around near the island of jamaica that would be around midnight coming up on sunday uh saturday night sunday morning at midnight into the overnight hours and if we continue to, uh, to move this across by six o'clock in the morning on sunday morning we jamaica could be looking at a formidable hurricane and a category three hurricane just to the north of the island spreading tropical storm force winds covering the entire island that's why they've got tropical storm watches right now and you could be looking at possibly hurricane force winds uh, on the northern island as well so it all depends on this deviation uh, of this track and if, the, if you kind of expand the view and look at the hurricane panel man not only going to be dealing with the the, the very uh, high winds but a lot of heavy rain as pretty much the heavy rains would cover the entire island with some with a lot of you know two to three inch per hour rainfall rates luckily it is moving fairly quick at 28 miles an hour but it's going to be impacting almost the entire day so it's not going to be a pretty day if you live in jamaica on sunday so definitely be on the lookout for that you've got two days for prepare uh for this system so take cautions uh now but if, even if we take a look at the latest uh, gfs more or less implying the same thing this has been pretty consistent for many runs in a row. It pretty much puts it in and around the island of Jamaica, not as bullish as the hurricane model, but still would be a formidable hurricane uh, to be dealing with uh, for Jamaica as this continues uh, moving across. Now, once it gets past Jamaica, obviously what has some land interaction and what's it, it's gonna get closer to uh, Cuba. So that's really gonna start impacting this system where we could see it rapidly detensifying as it gets in and around Cuba. So it could be down to a possibly a tropical storm by the time we get into uh, Monday, but then will this will continue uh, moving across and once, get, once it gets past uh, Cuba, then it would go back into the Gulf. And like I mentioned, there's a lot of uncertainty there, but a lot of indications puts it west of uh, in the Western part of Florida. And we could be looking at uh, a tropical storm impacting in and around the Tampa Bay area by the time we get into uh, Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning. So, and a lot of the reason would be this cold front. So this would be, this is a Sunday. So that cold front will be sagging southward and it's gonna start to stall out or really slow down by then. And you can see the cooler air and the warmer air, you know, depicted in this front. And once it, once it stalls out, it'll actually retreat back northward when it does, That'll actually allow uh, Elsa to move into the Gulf of Mexico, but probably going to be slowing it down as well. So that's where the uncertainty lies. And it's probably going to be regenerating, taking advantage of those warmer waters again. And, and it won't have that cold front to be working with. And plus, it'll be slowing down as well. So that would actually increase uh, the rainfall rates as well. And so by, by as we get into Tuesday, and it would be in and around near Florida by then, we're not going to be dealing with that cold front any longer. It's not going to be a player uh, any longer as this continues uh, moving across, probably dumping some very heavy rain into uh, Florida. But if we take a look at the latest uh, GFS on the maximum wind gust here, yes, it all depends on this track, but this pretty much puts it west northwestward, uh, pretty much puts it in and around near the island of Jamaica, pretty much, uh, you know, 
tropical forest forest winds covering the entire island of Jamaica, if not portions of it, getting hurricane forest winds on the northern tip here. Uh, but any deviation from this track would obviously put the higher winds further into Jamaica as this continues moving across, inundating the Cayman Islands as well. This would cross over Cuba, getting into the Western Gulf, and then probably put it into Florida by the time we get into, you know, early next week. And this would continue moving across, going up the uh, the East Coast, but probably not a storm uh, by then. It could start to re maybe regenerate back into the Eastern Seaboard, but that's early. That's later next week, but then it should be well off the coast uh, by then with little to hardly any impacts for uh, New England because I had a lot I had some questions about that but as this continues moving across this would be your rainfall so not only having to deal with some higher winds but some very heavy rain if not up to a foot in some locations with this particular system even it's even though it's moving so fast but we're looking at two to three inch per hour rainfall rate so all that has to do is be in, a, in around that same area for a five hour time frame and that could add up to a foot a foot totals with this extremely heavy rain as this will continue moving across and going into the Western Caribbean and impacting Florida uh, by early next week. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching this morning. I do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storm.